Okay. And I'm not going to create any new art uh, for my uh, for the metrics. I'm just going to use art that I already have. So, for example, when I want to show how many lives the character has left, I'm just going to use uh, the life art that I created earlier in the semester. Uh, and to show the number of points they have, I'm just going to use the Apple animation that we created. Um, one thing that I do want to add in, uh, which is a little bit tricky to add, so it's a good thing to go over, is a custom font. And that's something that you could use. Last week, we covered uh, doing a dialogue system, and we used Dialogic, and we just use the default font for that. But if you want to add your own font, um, I'm going to show you guys how to do that and add it to the metrics. So before we get into the game, that's the one new asset that I need to get. Um, so I'm going to go to my browser. And there's a lot of places that you can find fonts. Obviously, Google Fonts is a, you know, is a popular one. If I go to fonts.google.com, there's a website that I like called BitFontMaker. And this is a cool site because it's kind of similar to some of the other uh, tools we've used this semester where I can actually create my own fonts and it's just like a little bitmap editor. So I can draw like an A here and what I draw here gets added into the uh, font map over here. Um, so I could make my own font that way. Uh, so I can just click on, you know, here's B and I can make my B and I can keep going if I want to just design my own style of font. But a lot of people also publish their own fonts. So if I don't want to do that, I can go to the gallery page and I'll see people who have published fonts that they've made uh, Creative Commons. So, uh, you know, like our game art, opengameart.org, or some of the sound websites that we used, uh, we can actually use these fonts. Um, and usually they have like a download button. So we can. Uh, Type in a sample phrase. So I'll just type in hello. And it'll show us, you know, that font. And there's a lot of cool fonts that other people have made in here that you can add into your game. Um, so this one's kind of cool. I'm just going to go with this one. So I'm going to click download here. And you can see it downloaded a true type file, a TTF file. And so that's going to be in my downloads folder. And so I just have to add that into my game project. And then I can load it. And loading the font is a little tricky, so that's what I'm going to go over. Uh, but first, we just have to add it into the game. So I'm going to open up my game folder, go into game. And uh, I'm just going to add a new folder for this. So I'm going to say new folder, and say fonts, and then drag this in there. OK, so let's get out of here. So now I can start editing my game. And I'm going to start by adding the metrics first. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I might add some other stuff as well. Um, so I'm just going to click on my game and click Edit. And so the metrics are is basically like a layer. Uh, or the, u the user interface for the game is like a layer that goes on top of the game. So it doesn't move. When we move our character, it's always in the same place. Um, so for this example, uh, I'm going to choose a scene to use. I'm going to use level one that I created. And I'll put the metrics in here. Oh, I have to get rid of this second player I made for an example. Let's just delete that. OK. so. For my metrics, I want to create a, an entirely new canvas. So this is something that we haven't done before. Uh, we do have a parallax background, which has its own canvas, but we haven't created our own canvas before. So I'm going to go to level one and click plus. I'm going to type in canvas. And there's a few options that come up here. Um, I have to zoom scroll up a little bit. Uh, actually don't see the one I want. So I'm going to type in canvas layer. So the canvas layer is really what I want. This is like a separate drawing canvas that I can put other graphics on that will sit on top of my main game canvas. So I'm going to create this and I'm going to drag it up to the top here. It's not really part of the game, so it's going to have its own section. I'm going to call this UI. 
And inside of this, I can put in different scenes uh, that I can design that have components in them. So like my player and other scenes that I'm using, instead of designing this inside of here, inside of the level, I want to keep the level design by itself and just put the metrics over it. So I'm going to make a new scene, and I'm going to put that inside the UI section. So I'm going to click the plus button here and make a user interface scene, just like we did with our start menu. So I'll click user interface. I'm going to rename this metrics. And there's some scripts in the assets that we're going to use here. Um, so we'll put those in a second, but first we're going to design our metrics. So inside my metrics scene, you can see I have, a, it's a UI scene, so it looks a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go to scenes and go into UI, and I'll save this as metrics.tscn. And so for this one, I'm just going to add a couple things in the top left corner of the game window. Um, so I'm not going to use like the full rec layout. I'm not going to do a lot of the layout stuff that I did with my start menu. I'm just going to kind of zoom in over here and just add some stuff in here. So you don't have to do it that way. You can kind of do it whatever, however makes sense to you. Um, but that's what I'm going to do to start. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of layout. I'm just going to put a little horizontal box to contain my metrics in here. So I'm going to go to Add Metrics and click Add Child Node and look for an H box. Click Create. And so in my H box, I'm just going to put some animations and then some labels where I'm going to show how many uh, you know lives I have and how many points I have. So I'll show the live the points first. So I'm going to add in here. I'm actually going to add an animated sprites. So uh, this is something that I would normally put into a regular 2D scene, but we can also put it inside of a UI scene. So I'm going to put an animated sprite, and this is going to just be a display of um, how many points I have, um, or really apples, because that's the object that I have. So I'll just say apples count here. And uh, in here, so I need an animation. So I'm going to click on the frames and make new sprite frames. And I don't need multiple animations here. So I'm just going to leave this as default. I'll click on the waffle and go to sprites and uh, find my apple. There's my apple. And we looked at, we had, you know, the last time we looked at this was a while ago, but I can remember. It looks like I have three horizontal frames and three vertical frames, and I just want my first three frames. I don't want this bottom animation down here. Um, so I'm going to click Add Three Frames, and then I'll click on the Apple count again to bring up the properties of the inspector and just click on Playing. OK, so that looks pretty good, although it's centered, which I don't really want. So let's take my HBox container. So let's just move this down a little bit. We don't want it centered. We want it uh, down over here a little bit. OK, so that looks a little bit better. And so next to the apple, I'm just going to put a number to show many, how many apples we've collected. So for this, what I want to use is called a label. So I'm going to right click on my HBox container or click the plus and look for a label. So there's my label. I'm going to click Create. And I'm going to call this uh, apples count. Uh, maybe I'll call this apple icon. And this is apple count. So I'm going to put the default zero. So we're going to start out with zero. And I'm just going to drag uh, the text over. Oh, you know what? It doesn't like my apple icon because it's a sprite. I need to add a container here. So this is a good thing to remember with UI stuff. It can be a little finicky. So let's just give this a center container. Oops. So I'll put my Apple icon in there. And so now this should work. Mm, it doesn't like that either. You know what, maybe I'm overdoing this. Let's just try putting these you know, if I just put these inside the container, it'll let me put them wherever I want to. So I'm going to ignore the, the layout for a bit. Let's just delete this, and maybe we'll add it again later. 
But just to get things started, I'm going to ignore the layout. So here's my Apple account. And here's where I'm going to add in my custom font that I just downloaded. And this is a, a few more steps than you would think. But what we have to do, we can see the default font here. It's not very exciting. So to add a new font, uh, we go into um, theme overrides, go into fonts, and we turn a font on. And we're going to make a new uh, dynamic font. And under the font for font data, we're going to load and go to fonts and go to extrude and click open. So now we see our font. And then we can also um, set the size. So one thing that's kind of tricky is you have to have like different fonts with different sizes. So once I increase the size here, it's going to get kind of blurry. Uh, but if I reset it, uh, there's a way to get it back to, I'm kind of forgetting where this is, because they change where this goes. Uh, let's see, dynamic font settings. Okay, we can change the size, but it's supposed to update. Try 32. Um, there we go. Okay. So we want to turn off anti-aliasing. Okay, and then we can change the color as well. Um, if we go down to visibility, I'm going to change the color to match the main color of the apple. That might be too dark, but we can see how that looks. And let's turn off the grid snapping and just move it down. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now we have to update this count, um, but we'll do the code in a second. Let's continue laying out our metrics first before we add in the code. So one last thing on the font, if I want to use this font somewhere else, I have to, I can create it again like I just did, but I can also save this font. So I can go down to the font uh, and I can go to the dynamic font and click save. And so this is going to make a copy of my font. I can put this in the fonts folder, and I can call this, uh, I forget the name of this font. What is this font called? Extrude. So we can call this uh, extrude font. And so, so now I can actually load that font in other places without having to recreate it again. So if you want to use it in another metrics or uh, in your dialogue system, you'll be able to do that. So you don't have to do that. But if you want to reuse it without recreating it, that's how you do it. OK, so for our metrics, we also have a number of lives. Um, so for this one, uh, what I'm going to do here is a little bit different. I'm just going to show different uh, icons, and I'm going to remove them based on the number of lives the player has. So for this one, I'm actually just going to add another animated sprite and call this life one. And I'll add in some sprite frames. And I only need a default animation for this. And oh, I guess I never actually made a life animation for my character. So I'm just going to grab one from the assets. Uh, so I'm going to go back and go to 270 assets and go into sprites. And let's see, do I have a life animation? There we go. So I'm just going to use this as a default. Um, you can obviously make a new animation if you want to display the number of lives the character has. So I'm just going to use this little heart animation. And I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to click on it and turn playing on. And I'm just going to have three of these. And I have a special script that will turn these on based on the number of lives the player has. So I'm going to duplicate this twice. 
Uh, actually, let's just duplicate it once first and then move this over. And I'm going to duplicate it again and move that over. So that's our full UI. So let's add this into our scene and then we'll connect the script to make it work. So let's go back to level one. Inside my UI uh, canvas layer, I'm going to instance my metric scene. So I'm going to click on instance child scene and type in metrics. You can see there's one inside the assets, but I want to use the one I just created. So I'm just going to click on that one and click open. And it's going to look a little weird at first. It looks like it's stuck under the player, but that's because it's showing us where it is in the camera view. When I run this scene, we'll see that they're where they should be. Uh, oh, I have to turn the camera on. I guess I turned, when I had two players, I turned the camera off. So let's try that again. Okay, so now you can see the metrics in the top left corner of the screen. And when the player moves, the metrics don't move with the player. They just stay where they are. So that's what the canvas layer does. It allows us to put graphics on top of the basic graphics in our scene. So we can have a separate component uh, where we can show information, we can put buttons and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we can put whatever we need to display to the character in the game. So now we have to have to connect up some scripts to update these values. So there's a couple different things we have to do here. One thing is that we're, even though we only have one level, uh, the way the scripts are written, we want to have some va values for our character that are globally available, meaning they're available to any scene in our game. Because if we add more levels, we'll want to keep the same number of lives and the same number of points. So there's a way to do that, which is creating a global script. So I'm going to go over to my scripts window. And this is a script that's not attached to any player. It's just attached to the game itself. I'm going to close all of my scripts that I have open, and I'm going to create a new script. This is a really, really simple script. I want to make sure it's in my scripts folder, and I'm just going to call it global.gd. So this is anything that I want to be available to the whole game, not just a particular scene. So in my global script, I'm just going to define a few things, like the number of points or item count, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to say variable item count. That's how many items or apples the player has collected. I'm going to set that equal to zero. So if you have more than one item, you can make more than one variable. I could also have an apple count equal zero, or I could have points. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it item count as a generic. And then we have the number of lives the player starts with. Um, so player lives, or let's call it total lives. And let's give the player three lives because I have three hearts. And let's also set a current number of lives. So the player can lose lives, but we want to know how many lives to set back. So the player lives will be the current number of lives, and we'll set that to three as well. So that's pretty much everything we need to do in this script, except now we need to attach it to the game. So anything that you want to keep track of over the course of your game needs to go into this global script. Um, and there's an example of this in the assets folder as well. If you go into assets and go into scripts and look at global, uh, you'll see something very similar. Uh, so let's go back to our global script that we just created. And we need to add this to the game so it doesn't go in a specific scene. So we have to go to Project, Project Settings. And we can add this into Auto Load. And this Auto Load area will load scripts when the game begins. So I just have to choose the script. It's global. And then click Add. And so now I can keep track of these values over the course of the game. So now let's add some scripts to our metrics uh, scene to uh, update these values. I'm going to go to metrics, and I'm just going to use some built-in scripts 
for in the assets folder for this. So I'm going to click on the main metrics node and I'm going to go over to the inspector and scroll down to the bottom and find the script tag and click load and go to scripts or wait, sorry, I want to go to assets first, assets and then scripts. And for the main node in here, there's a script called metrics manager. We're just going to open that up. And if we click on that, it's not that long of a script, so let's talk about what it does. So basically, we get a reference to all of the metrics that we want to keep track of. And each one of those metrics is going to have its own function to update the value. Uh, so this basically just gets a reference to all of the metrics. We're going to add them in. And then it loads the values. And then it updates the display. So that's pretty much all it does. And then we're going to update the display of our metrics whenever anything changes in our game. So for our metrics, when we click back on this, you can see now in the script variables, there's this thing called metrics paths that matches the code right here. And anything that I put in here will be updated uh, when I update my metrics. I'm going to put my apples count in there. Oh, wait, I have to change the size first. So I have to click on this and change the size. I have four metrics that I'm displaying. So I'm going to put the apples count in the first one, life one in the next one, life two, and life three. And if I add more or take them away, I can just delete them or increase the size. So basically, all this does is it updates all of my different metrics when something happens. So then each one of those little metrics needs its own script to update. So for my count, I'm going to click on that. And then we'll go back to the inspector, find the script value at the bottom, and load and go to our assets folder, go to scripts again. And now we're looking for something called metric count. OK, so this is a metric value that counts. And if we look at that, Basically, we just give it a reference to a global variable. So we just have to match this item count to this item count. If you have other values, you can change it there. So you can have multiple counts. And then it's going to update based on whatever that value is. So it's pretty simple. You just have to match this item count here uh, to whatever your item count is here. So when we click on the apples count, there's an item name here. And you can type in different things there based on what you want to keep track of. So item is just generic. If you have multiple items, you can change those values to keep track of multiple things. So then a similar thing happens with our life values. So for our life value, we're going to add a script here. So I'm going to go to script and click load. And uh, go to assets, go to scripts. And for this one, it's a metric toggle. So we want to toggle the life heart animation on and off based on the number of lives. So you click open there. And uh, we're going to have to add this script to each one of our lives. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Oh, whoops. Uh, we want to go to assets, scripts, and toggle. And one more time, assets, scripts, and toggle. OK, so then we just have to set the number and the name. So there's two values here. So player lives, so we, that's already set up correctly. But if you had different things that you wanted to use counts for, you could change that. So the player lives has to match here. And then the value just has to match the value that you want. So for life number two, uh, this one has to be two. And for life number three, this one has to be three. So once I have all that set up, now we just go back to our main level. And when something changes, we are going to update these values. So we're going to go back to level one. And this is where we're going to have to make a few changes to the code. So we need to know when the player gets hit 
so that's when they hit the cactus or uh, these bugs, as well as when they get an apple. And we actually don't have a life, so I'll add that if we have time. Uh, but that's similar to adding the apple. So in order to do this, we need a central way of communicating between the different components of our scene. And I have something for that called the scene manager. Uh, it's going to work a little bit differently, so we may have to make some changes to that. So I may make a copy of it so that we can make changes. Um, so let's go into our assets. I'm going to go into scripts and find the scene manager. So this is a script that's going to keep track of various things for us. And we're probably going to have to change some things here. Uh, but that's OK. I'll just, I'll just uh, make a copy. So I'm going to copy. Or let's duplicate this. Uh, I'll call this scene manager uh, fall 2022. And I'm going to throw this into my scripts folder. So that way, if we change anything here, uh, we'll still have the original version. So for level one, I'm going to go to the script and load my new copy of my scene manager. And what this is going to let us do is connect events that are happening in the scene to various things in our scene. So for our scene manager, we have the player. So we can just drag. Uh, all these script variables just reference different parts of our scene. So we need to know where the player is. I'm going to drag that in there. Uh, we have the game over and the win game. So we're just going to add those into our UI. So we made those scenes last week. I'm going to instance the scene and find our game over. And open that up. Oh, and I should actually change the name of this node to game over. Forgot to update these node names. OK, uh, so let's delete this and re-add it. OK, and then we want our win game, although we don't have a win game condition right now, uh, so I'm not sure that we'll get to this part. So we'll instance a child scene and find our win game. We also, I also forgot to change this to win game. Uh, so let's get that and add it again. Okay. So then back to our scene manager. So we have a game over path. I'm going to throw that in there. We have a win game path. And we have a metrics path. And then there's a next level path. We're not going to get to this part. So I'm just going to delete that bit. OK, so let's go into our code. And let's see. So let's delete this next level part. Don't need that. And so then there's some different functions in here that will do different things. So we have a game over function that we can connect to when the player uh, dies or loses. Um, I don't need to print, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, and there's a game over sound option. Uh, I'm going to leave that out for now. There's also a win game sound here. I'm going to leave that out. So then this is when the player gets hit. This is going to calculate if the player should be alive or not. And if not, then it can call the game over function. I don't know why that's commented out. We can bring that back in. Uh, then we have different items. So if we get an item, we can add to the global item count and update our metrics. So this also updates the metrics for us. Uh, and then we don't have this portal stuff yet. So I'm just going to delete this. Oh, and then I have separated the player dies from game over. So that's why I don't have this here. 
So now we just have to connect some events from our player uh, to our scene manager, and we should be ready to go. So I'm going to go to the player and go to the node over here. So if the player gets hit, we want to connect that to on player hit right here. So I'm going to double click player hit, connect it to level one. And I just have to change this receiver method to match the right method. So it's on player hit. And when you see that green button connect to the right place, that means that it's set up correctly. Uh, so then we have item collected, and that actually needs to come from our items, I think. Let's check. Uh, here's my apple. Let's look at the script here. Uh, oh, there's no signal here. We may have just not added that when we did this part. Let's double check the script in the assets just to see our item manager. Yeah, this has a signal item collected. So let's just add that to our uh, item manager script. So we need a signal for when the item gets collected. So we can just write signal item collected. And I'll publish this new code uh, as I did last week. And so when the item is collected, we just emit the signal with the item type. So we'll say emit signal item collected. and then the item type. So this is so you can have multiple types of items. Okay, so now we just have to connect the apples to the scene. So I have a lot of apples. I should have connected this before, um, but I just have to double click here and change the receiver method to on item collected. I'm gonna copy this and hit connect and just do that a bunch of times. Uh, and it looks like they're connecting to the right place, so that's good. Uh, so I'll just do this with a few of them. It's a bit tedious, so I'm not going to do all of them right now. I'll update the rest of them later. Uh, but this should be enough to get us started. Okay. So let's try that out. Let's make sure that's all working correctly. Okay, so now when I hit the cactus, we should see a life go away. There we go, so one of the lives goes away. And if I get hit three times, I should lose. Okay, so we have to fix that part uh, so that the game doesn't restart, but we go to the game over scene. So now let's see if I can collect apples. Okay, so you see the count on the apples going up. Okay, so our, interf our user interface is connected. So let's just fix a couple things. So now that we actually have a game over scene, when my player dies, instead of resetting the game, uh, we can, where's the dies? So this reloads the current scene. So instead of that, what we can do is emit our dies signal. Uh, which will tell our scene manager to open up the, uh, the end game scene. So I'll say emit signal player dies. All 
Okay, so now if I connect that to the scene manager in level one, and make sure I have the right receiver method. Oh, no, I got that wrong. Um, let's reconnect that. Oh, so I just used the default there. I don't know why that I did that differently. So we'll just use the default there. There we go. So that'll give us a game over. We can delete this code that just got here. We don't need that code. OK, so now if I get hit a bunch of times, we should see the game over scene. OK, so there's our game over. So we can quit or we can start again. And so when we start again, we get our lives back uh, and we can try again. OK, so there's one last little thing to do, which is to add in uh, the ability to get a life back, um, which is just adding another item. So this is very similar to the item uh, demo that I did earlier in the semester. But I have these apples. We're basically just going to duplicate one of these apple scenes and change it to a life. So I'm just going to do this real quick in a few minutes and then add these in just to demonstrate that. Um, so I'm going to go to my file system and go to my scenes, go to my components. Here's my apple. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call this life. And so now I'm going to open up the life. All I have to do here is change the animation and change the item name. So I'm going to change this to life. Uh, let's go back to the inspector. And the item type is life. And let's check our uh, script to make sure that's what it's looking for. So our scene manager is either looking for an apple or a life. And you can change that depending on what items you have. Um, so then we want to change this sprite. So for collected, uh, I'm just going to delete these. And I'm going to go into my. 270 assets sprites and choose the reward life or actually no I want to go back cancel so for collected I have a collected so I had these sprites separately when I did this before I'm just going to add those in go to idle uh, delete these add in the reward life this is two by two. Okay. So now I can throw this into my level as well. So I'm just going to show it one as an example. So I'll put one as a reward. I assume that if you get to here, you might have gotten hurt. So let's add in a life here. Uh, so I'm going to add in a new. Uh, default 2D node to organize the lives. So I put this in my apples by mistake. Let's select my main level node and add a node 2D, call this life, and put this up here. And then I'm going to add an instance of my life scene here. So I'm just going to type in life and open that. And this is going to be at zero, 00, so let's move it over. Oops. It's going to be hard to select here, so let's actually just go to the transform and move it over a little bit. Okay, so now I can move it, so let's zoom out a bit. And I'm going to put it in between these two bugs as a little reward. And then I just have to make sure my life is connected to my scene manager. So once we have a scene manager in here, this kind of com connects all of our components to each other. And so I'm going to click on the life and go to node and click item collected. And just change this to the generic on item collected. 
and connect that to my scene manager. There we go. So if the life, the life will get our life back. So that's the last thing I want to test and then I'll be done. Okay, so if I lose a life here, now I've lost two lives. So now, hopefully I'll get this life before I get hit by the bugs. Yeah, so I got a life back. So that's good. Although, okay, so now, if I can make it. Okay, so I lost, but at least I got pretty close. So let's click quit, and that's it. All right, so we've added a bunch of stuff there. Uh, usually a lot of that stuff we kind of do earlier in the semester, but we've taken a little bit of a different path this semester, so we kind of had to catch up on a few things. But hopefully all that made a little bit of sense. Um, and if you are implementing any of those UI things into your game before the final, uh, and you have any you know trouble with anything, let me know and we can go over it. Um, but yeah, most of those scripts are in the assets folder, so you can just grab them from there. You might need to make a couple of modifications, but they should work uh, for the most part with what we've got so far. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it for today. So we'll move to uh, workshop time. I'm going to stop recording.